What's up guys, Blademaster here bringing you another Total War Attila online battle and this is going to be a really exciting set of matches that I'm going to bring to you guys. This is uh, round 3 of Pontic's uh, Total War tournament, the um, Fall of Rome, the Attila tournament. And in this matchup, I am fighting against uh, William Kazanka from the Sacred Band Clan, very um, uh, strong player. He beat Armenian King in the first round uh, of uh, the Fall of Rome tournament and um, he played someone else, I forgot who it was, or maybe he fought Armenian King in the second round. So for the third round, he uh, it's going to be me against him. I uh, played against Indy Pride and whooped his bitch ass <laughs> in, the, in the first uh, in the first round. Um, and yeah, those those replays will be uh, I can I can put those replays in the description. I've al already covered those in my uh, in a previous video. So in the second round, I was supposed to fight uh, Pro Kratos from the Sith Clan, but uh, he has um, studies and real life stuff going on, so he couldn't uh, participate. So I'm going to play. Kazanka, uh, the rules and the brackets, etc., will be provided in the description. So, the uh, first match is going to be played with uh, the Burgundians versus the Alamans. I've taken the Burgundians, and immediately you can see with the Alamans, uh, uh, Kazanka has opted for kind of like a diagonal approach to uh, facing my army. He's brought a total of four Germanic pikes, six Germanic archers, a total of three Protectorious uh, de uh, Defectors, one Germanic nobles, and three noble Germanic horsemen with a uh, double gold chevron. Now, we played this game for like two minutes before. Uh, we played the exact same build, but it, it got disconnected. And he ad adopted a much straight, much more straightforward approach in that game. And he got hammered um, by uh, my Germanic archers, even though they were this, like, even though they were same, uh, you know, even though they were same in number. So he, he decided, you know, I mean, it got disconnected, so he decided to go for a different approach, which is very smart. And uh, I've brought a total of six Germanic archers myself, three Germanic pikes, a total of four Burgundian axemen, one Germanic Nobles General and a total of six Royal Lancers. Now, by moving all of his Noble Germanic Horsemen um, onto one side, he's basically ensured that he can overload one flank, which is basically the only re the only way you can win win out against Noble. Uh, sorry, win out against Royal Lancers. They're just so incredibly uh, incredibly powerful. That, or you can use Diamond Formation. So we'll see if he can if he combines both of them, uses Diamond Formation on my Royal Lancers, and then overpowers them before the Royal Lancers on this side get a chance to come in here. I I am uh, sending them closer to the main line of my, uh, you know, of my army. But while he's moving around, I'm getting good shots in with my Germanic Archers. Let's take a look at how many kills they've gotten so far. 16, 8, you know, I think they're killing off a lot of his Germanic Archers. They are trying to take some shots on my Royal Lances, but my Royal Lances are going to go in for the charge here. Uh, has he popped Diamond? No, he didn't pop Diamond on his, uh, on his Noble Germanic. Oh, he's, he just about started to, but the, it, the Diamond Formation didn't, uh, wasn't activated fully. So they are starting to take a lot of casualties from my Germanic uh, or from my Royal Lances. He got an extra Noble Germanic Horseman uh, and I, I I was forced to charge in with my Burgundian Axeman. Also following up with the Germanic Pikes. Um, but yeah, that Burgundian Axeman is basically dead. 67 units left in it. And while he's pulling out though, he's going to take a lot of casualties from the Burgundian Axeman and their high melee attack. And now he's going to rear charge one of my Royal Lances who managed to get a charge in onto his uh, Noble Germanic Horseman who weren't in Diamond Formation. So they're going to get a rear charge, I think. Uh, these noble Germanics. Meanwhile, I'm still supporting, I'm still uh, sending my Royal Lancers uh, more and more inside or deep into my own formation. Here, noble Germanic horsemen uh, got a rear charge on my Royal Lancers. These Royal Lancers are starting to die, uh, only getting 20 kills, and here only 23 kills with my Royal Lancers um, because they just got simply overpowered by excess numbers of uh, noble Germanic horsemen. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I've uh, sent some pikemen without pike phalanx to just try and charge into his pike line and disrupt his formation that way. Uh, and here my Burgundian axemen uh, should be able to get a good number of kills, 24 kills on uh, noble Germanic horsemen. And even though he's sending his protectors defectors here, as long as I bring more and more of my Burgundian axemen to support this battle, then it'll be good for me. Here I'm charging in with one of my royal lancers onto his uh, Germanic archers because I found a gap in his line. Uh, they are trying to get caught by their own units. They they charged into these Germanic archers, got 77 kills on them already. And now the support from my second Royal Lancer is going to come in. And uh, they're going to get a very clean charge on some noble Germanic horsemen, which is excellent for me. And then I've got this one more Royal Lancer that's just, that I've just kept in reserve. And I'm waiting for this uh, little infantry blob to, to separate out or to just uh, allow them to get a clean charge in. And it looks like they will. It looks like they'll get, you know, close to 100 kills right off the charge, I think. Let's try and take a look. Meanwhile, my Royal Lancers on the other side is uh, disrupting his Archer line. 75, 76 kills right off the charge. And his Germanic Nobles basically down to 30, 30 men. And I still got some more Burgundian Axemen that can come in and charge here. 
Um, and this Royal Lancer with the double experience chevron just destroying the rest of his Germanic archers. Meanwhile, my Germanic archers have done decently themselves. 26 skills on some of them, 49 with a couple, 73. Uh, killed off a lot of his archer line while he was moving around. These Royal Lancers, while I'm forced to pull, pull, pull them out, and they're taking a lot of casualties in the process, but they've done the damage. They got 269 kills, and here the uh, his this entire blob is trying to disintegrate with uh, the help of my Burgundian Axemen coming into charge. And uh, his protector, his defectors, will not do well against Burgundian Axemen, especially once they've got a clean charge in. Here, coming in for a second charge with my Royal Lancers against his uh, Germanic Archers and some of his protector, his defectors. 287 kills with them. And now that he's only left with uh, Germanic Archers and I still have a ton of Royal Lancers left, uh, it's a close victory for me. So OP or not, um, these Royal Lancers, I'll let you guys decide. Um, you know, it's they, they performed really well. That's all, I mean, at the very least I can say that. And combined with a ton of, uh, you know, Germanic Archers, they will lay waste to, um, you know, a rather inferior faction like the Alamans, despite the uh, better positioning and early game moves by... Um, by William Kazanka. That being said, he, uh, moving around his uh, units at the start of the game, while they were, uh, they, the problem was they were in range of my Germanic archers, so I managed to get a lot of kills on his on his archer line and some of his cavalry too, with my archers, which wouldn't have been the case if he just adopted a more straightforward approach or if he moved around when he was out of range of my archers. Anyways, guys, that's the end of this battle. Stay tuned for uh, game two and possibly game three. Peace.